everyone, Travis here with The Modern Bay Company. We do Subaru conversions in Volkswagen buses, specifically for the 1973 to 79 VW buses right now. And today we've got a 2002 Subaru Legacy Outback, and we're gonna be pulling the wiring harness, which we'll need uh, in the conversion. And so uh, first up, we're gonna pull the dash. We're gonna pull everything we need from in the engine bay. And this video, I'm gonna try to show you exactly how to do it, exactly what you need, what you don't need, including the tools and everything else, and then show you what you're gonna end up with uh, when you're done. So. We're just going to dive right in, follow along, and thanks for watching. So just a quick word here on tools. This is a lot of stuff. I'm basically an advertisement for Milwaukee right now. Um, I love their system, and so I will be an advertisement for it. But you don't actually need all this stuff. If you've got a basic set of tools, uh, tin snips, uh, stuff like that, you'll be just fine. Um, I use all this stuff to make the job as fast as humanly possible. But again, you don't need uh, all this, uh, but it does help. All right, all right. So this is what you're going to end up with when you're done. I'll do a little tour and then we'll dive right in. Any tour of the wiring harness has got to start with the brains of it all, which is the computer. I take this guy off of the vehicle, um, just drill it off, and then I get some uh, 3M uh, double-sided tape, the good stuff, and stick it on there permanently so that it is always with the vehicle. You can always reference it easily. Uh, you can't wear it off like Sharpie can or anything else like that. So moving on from here, we've got, of course, the three main connectors. Uh, you do need to keep this on there. That's a ground for a bunch of the different sensors, like a ground point, common ground point. So. Got that. If we're coming on around right here, we'll go out to this leg. So this leg, we've got our two main engine connectors. Then we've got the oxygen sensor connectors right here, upstream, downstream. So that's that leg. If we go over to this leg, it's a big bulky leg, but all that's in there that we need is the main wiring or the main relay it's right here, which is usually situated in the car next to the ECM. And if we backtrack here and then follow the southern main bundle, this is under the steering column. We've got our two diagnostic connectors right there, and then a bunch of garbage you don't need. <laughs> And then if we keep going, we've got our fuel pump relay right here. A bunch of garbage we didn't need, so we cut it off. And then coming all the way out here, we've got our OBD2 port, um, the data link right there. Uh, don't need that guy, but I just haven't cut it off yet. So that is the main harness. Then we've got our alternator sub harness. Um, so quick notes here. I actually don't reuse this except for um, this guy right here. Uh, if you're working on the 2000 to 2004 Subaru Outback, you'll have this three pin. Um, you can use this if you like, if it'll reach, you can use part of it and extend it. Um, but what I do is like to make this essentially brand new. Um, you don't need this. This goes to the AC compressor. If you're gonna have AC, you can consider putting it in, but if not, you can snip that guy right off as you don't really need it. So that's the overview one last time, coming from one end to the other. That's it. This may go without saying, but you need to disconnect the battery before you start, especially when you're working inside because the airbags can go off. So this is easy enough. 10 mil socket disconnect both these guys i don't usually pull the front seats but just to make it a little bit easier for the video i did it's kind of fun uh, you never know what you're going to find usually find some change for the kids to head to the candy shop which is cool but uh, you don't actually need to pull the seats all right here we go so i'm gonna start with this stuff on the dash and then move on to this side with the steering column all this stuff under here and get rolling so First off, we'll take a little um, pry bar, get this guy off of here. Um, I've actually already disconnected the battery, so I won't be able to shift this. I do like to shift it back sometimes just to get it out of the way. I don't care about any of this stuff. I'm just trying to go as quickly as possible. So if you're trying to use any of this stuff, you can be a little more gentle with it all, but I tend to just go for it. And so I like to rip things out get some frustration out, you know, just a little bit of that. Um, got my Phillips head right here. Move both of those guys. And then just start rolling. Key tool to getting this part of the dash out is your Phillips with an ex extension there. So I just pry this guy down and then you can start getting all these screws out. Oh, I will also say after you get in here, um, turn the key on, press the brake pedal, de-energize the airbag system to make sure that when we start snipping those wires, the airbags don't pop on us. Oh my god! Oh my gosh! It's never happened to me, but it could. And we just want to do everything we can to keep that from happening, obviously, because that's pretty dangerous. All right, so we got this. Now, quick trick: let's get this guy out of the way. So. I'm gonna pry this little access port up. I'm gonna stick the key in there. 
which will allow us to shift all the way down just to get that out of the way for now. So boom, we've got this and this is where our MVP tool of the day is going to come in and we start cutting. You definitely don't need any of these wires back here. That's that. Don't need it. Just for you. <laughs> Alright, so we got that out. Now we will keep rolling along. Like I said, I don't need any of this. It's going to the scrap yard. So, there we go. You can take your time pulling it if you want to, but it's not really going to do a whole lot for you. Uh, this right here is kind of annoying. There's these two screws that go up from the bottom of the ashtray. I don't really care to mess with it, so we got what we need out of there. We can move on to under the dash here. And we're looking at the side of the dash, so on the side we need one, two, and then there's this little guy down here, um, and we can start. Whoa! Score! Look at that! I'm rich! All right, money! <laughs> um, kids are gonna go crazy at the candy shop. Oh no! Are you sure? Look in all your pockets, looks really good. There you go! Hey Matt, what you doing? I'm gonna go crazy at the candy store. Um, anyway, so we'll get this part off and then we'll start underneath there and keep rolling. All right, take our little pick. Pop those guys out. All right, you can add that. Once we've got that fascia piece off, we've got this little guy, so one, two bolts there. And then we're gonna drop the steering column after that. And I'm also gonna get my 10 mil and start taking off all the 10 mil stuff that I see. And we'll get this little side piece too. Don't need that at all. Going back there and then back to the 10. All right, looking under the steering column here, um, I usually go on the other guys while it's still up, just to get things separated and off. And then if you look up under here, we've got one and two bolts for the steering column. I believe those are these 14 mils. Nope, they're 12s. And there's our column, nice and loose, ready to come off. Um, next up, we've got these two on this side. We're just going to quickly grab these two screws right here. All right. Now we can pull up this piece and toss it in the back. On the other side, we're going to get this off, get the glove box off, get that side panel off, and start really disconnecting everything here, get the airbag too. So first up, this guy, we've got our little pry handle. Get in there, reveals a little 10 mil bolt. Uh, onto the glove box. My old trick I learned in prison. Get that guy off. Get it out of here. Boom. Now I have access to all these screws all the way around and then access to the airbag up there. So we're going to get those guys, get the side panel off, and keep rolling. That guy. Looking at the underside of the glove box, we have access to one, two, and then the airbag, one, two, three, uh, right there. So we'll start getting all this stuff off as well. Looks like I missed one screw there, so I'll grab that too. The rolling pile of junk back there. Okay, we've got full access to the glove box, under the glove box area. Okay, to get the airbag out, there's one more. We got this guy right back there. So we got one, two, three, and that guy should come on out. So we'll grab that real quick. And then if I gently pull up on this, boom, airbag is out. Point this away from you when you cut these wires just to be extra safe there. Two quick bolts you want to get before you Try to yank this dash, this guy, and then the one on the other side, uh, right there, which you can also see 
through here, right back there. Before we actually try to start pulling this dash, if you look in here, we've got one, two bolts. You need to grab those guys real quick before you try to free this dash up. But once you do, should be able to pop it off the firewall and be good to go. Once you get the dash separated, you're gonna have a number of things that you just need to straight clip off. That's where your tin snips, yet again, are the hero. So you can just go along anything that is still connected. You don't need this stuff. You can snip, snip, snip it. Got that guy. So these guys, there's probably still some stuff yeah, on the other side. So we'll grab that stuff and get this guy out the rest of the way. So we've got some of this stuff still connected. So again, 10 snips for the win. Getting this connection going to the, it's called the super multiple junction here. Oh, I guess you gotta see it. <laughs> Get the connection going to this guy. Again, don't need any of this. You can just start snipping all those wires. Getting it off of there. Dash almost out. There's always gonna be a few stragglers. Like these. Boom. <laughs> there we go. With the dash out, next step, I'm gonna remove this bolt, that bolt underneath on the same unit. And then what I do to get this out very quickly is a sawzall, sawzall, and cut, cut with the sawzall down there to get the metal support bar out of there. Everything's freed up, gotta cut a bunch of wires. Getting messy here, but we've got this guy fully disconnected. It's mainly just airbag circuit connections, but got that guy off and on to the next thing. I'm gonna take a quick moment here to point out the things that we need and where they are. So one fuel pump relay. We're gonna need that circuit. So we're gonna keep that, get it off of there. Don't need anything else on here. Two, we need this OBE2 port and it's wiring. So I'll show you how to get that guy, but it basically runs along the pillar here. Three, we need these diagnostic connectors under there. So <laughs> you can fondle those, but that's what we need. Um, four, I'm gonna zoom up. Maybe we need that brown main relay. Um, and then five, we need the ECM, which is under the carpet. I call it the treasure chest, but that's what we're gonna get right in there. So to get to that stuff, we've gotta take more things off. Heater core, uh, disconnect the AC, kind of pull it back a little bit, remove that little panel, this little panel and get out those guys. Quick intermission here, uh, just to say, uh, we are getting there. Uh, it's been maybe 45 minutes or an hour so far. We've gotten down to this point. We're really making some hay, but I say this every video uh, about doing the harness pulls. This kind of sucks. Like if you are, if you enjoy this stuff, if, if you've got some frustration to get out, go for it, cut stuff, pull stuff, yank stuff. Um, but if you can have this done for you, uh, great do it. Um, we pull harnesses from these all day long. So give us a shout if you need a harness, uh, a complete donor setup, whatever it is. Um, we're happy to help, but, <laughs> but yeah, just be prepared. Like this isn't really for the faint of heart, especially if it's your, it's your first time doing it. Um, it can just feel like a lot. Uh, you can actually tell I'm breathing heavily because, <laughs> because it's tiring work, uh, controlling your body, uh, and getting into all these spaces, but it's worth it. It's going to be amazing. Uh, just remember when you turn that key for the first time on your bus with a new Subaru powered engine. So, uh, we're going to keep rolling here and dive into this side and start disconnecting the things we need to to get to the ECM. So here we go. We are now going to go for the ECM. It's sitting right under here. And so what I'm going to do is pull off this piece, just pry it right up. You'll see in the video, pull the carpet back and then we can access the ECM. And I'll take some more detailed videos when we get to that point. Pull the carpet back and this is the treasure chest. <laughs> What I call the treasure chest is ECM. To gain access to it, we've got one, two, three, four bolts. So we'll take that guy off and then also unbolt the ECM. Got those bolts off for the cover. Now for the ECM in particular, we've got one and two. 
remember if there's another one on the back side here. Uh, this is interesting. I wonder if this has been replaced. Uh, because A, these zip ties are cut on this guy. And B, this is strange, but there's a little plastic bag under the carpet down here when I peeled the carpet up. So it leads me to believe maybe this has been changed at some point. It doesn't really matter that much for our purposes because I know it's a known good ECM. So we'll go ahead and take this guy out. We've got this bolt here. This guy. And then, boom. We want to treat this guy nicely. Not that it's super fragile, but it's fragile enough that you just want to be kind to it. Um, so next up, I'm going to unplug these three connectors, tape them up, and then put this guy on our table uh, in a safe place. I've got those connections taped up just so no dirt or crud falls in there. And next up, there's just a lot of these small nuts all the way across. Uh, so I'm going to disconnect all that stuff, start getting the heater core ready to pull back, um, and then start uh, cutting out what we need from the harness. So I think what I'll do is go over here, I'm going to take my tin snips, and cut all this stuff, go into the harness, because we are going to the steering column, because we don't need that. That'll allow the column to drop a little bit more and stop putting stress on the main uh, harness over there. Um, not that that's, I mean, it's fine, but, um, and then start pulling the OBD2 port and the fuel pump harness. So we'll get that side kind of laid over. We'll get our heater core off. We'll pull back our AC unit, and then we can get this main relay out, kind of strung from behind there, and uh, get the rest of the harness coming out too. Garbage. Don't need any of this stuff. There we go. All the column stuff separated in three. This stuff don't need. This is all just going down here. So I'm actually going to pare this down even further. So I have less to worry about later on. Now, I'm not cutting anything going to the fuel pump relay. I'm just cutting some of this stuff going to that super multiple junction and other places we don't care about. Looking at this mess right here. Got all this stuff from the steering column totally disconnected. Don't need any of that. We do need these two green connectors, but all that other stuff, we can snip it right off. Cut that guy. We need this fuel pump connector, but this other stuff, I started cutting some of it off. We'll go around to the other side and get a video of cutting the rest of it off. So for the whole fuse box, I want you to see this. It seems like you would need some of this stuff, but you don't. <laughs> so I cut that all off. It's gone. It's going to the back. Goodbye. We need this. So all these other guys, cut, cut, cut. We'll pair that stuff out of the harness later. And we're good to go there. And now we're going to grab this OBD2 port right here by prying this off and getting access to those wires down there. For the OBD2 port, which is this port right here, it's our data link. We're gonna disconnect, we're just gonna remove this, keep the bracket on it for now, but you see it's part of this mess of wires. We don't need any of this stuff going to the body. So we're just gonna make sure that we get this branch that's coming off the OBD2 port and going up into here. Uh, and then that's, that's all we need. So we're going to uh, clip these little connectors that connect it to the kick, uh, kick panel over here, clip all this stuff going to the body and then uh, we'll have what we need from this side. We are cruising here. We've got our OBD2 port. I uh, don't need that relay, but I'm gonna leave it on for now. Um, but we've got that branch. Now I'm gonna disconnect this, back of this from what goes up into the left fender. I don't need that. And then we're almost gonna be free on this whole side, we can start focusing on that stuff. One step closer, we are free of the stuff that goes up into the left fender. I'm going to cut this guy. Don't need it. And then we're going to be totally good for the left side of the harness. And we've still got 
our diagnostic connectors right there, um, which we'll need. So we're looking good. One quick note, if you cut this stuff as close to the main branch um, as you realistically can, it's just going to make your life a little bit easier when you go to do the harness conversion um, or for the guy like me who's going to do the harness conversion. Um, either way, it just makes it a little bit easier um, than dealing with even more wire and branches and all that stuff. So another checkpoint here, we're about halfway through. We've gotten everything we need from this side, from the driver's side, um, under the dash. We're going to now go into the engine compartment, um, cut the heater core lines so that we can pull this heater core forward. Um, and then we're also going to uh, pull the AC unit forward, get everything we need from under here, and then we're going to move into the engine compartment um, and push everything through uh, so that we'll be good to go. All right, so I have already drained the coolant from the motor last night. I just cut that lower left radiator hose, uh, let it drain out. I also drained the oil, uh, just so I don't have to do it later uh, after I pulled the engine. Uh, but right now we're going to remove the intake. Uh, so we can gain access to where the heater hose is going to the heater core uh, inside. So uh, it's, it's pretty quick and easy. It's just some 10 millimeter bolts. I'll uh, go ahead and remove this whole thing. We need to do it uh, later anyway for pulling the motor, uh, but this will be pretty quick and easy. All right, so still focusing on getting the harness out of the inside, but we've got this hose going to the heater core and then we've got this one right here going to the heater core i take the saws off and i just cut those right off flush with the firewall because that's the fastest way to do it for me you could just disconnect these and wiggle those guys off uh, whatever floats your boat totally fine um, i also have already drained this system of coolant so we don't need to do that um, otherwise you'll have a big mess if you don't do that and then we can see over here um, these two guys going into the cabin uh, we're going to disconnect this guy here, disconnect from the oxygen sensors, and then feed it through. And then we just need, oh no, this is a 2002, so we don't need the atmospheric pressure sensor because there is none. So really we just need this guy right here. This side of the motor, what we're gonna do is disconnect these two, go into the engine wiring harness. Uh, which of course we also need. So that's just going to go with the engine when it comes out. But we're going to gently disconnect these two guys. I'll use two hands to do that so I don't pull on the wires. But once those two are disconnected, we also need to disconnect uh, this guy, go to the O2 sensor and this guy as well. So we'll get one, two, three, four um, pieces of this harness and we'll feed them all right back through here. Easy enough on these guys. We've got the two main harness um, connections. We've got our uh, six pin oxygen sensor and our four pin right there. So, and then I cut that zip tie right there. So this will feed right in through here. Um, and basically I use a little pry bar with a blunt edge and I get one edge of this grommet in and then work it all the way around and push it in. I'm not ready to do that quite yet because we still have to remove uh, this guy to get access. So we'll do that now. All right, so another quick checkpoint here. Uh, we've got our wires in the engine bay disconnected. Now we've got to get this um, out so that we can access what's back in there. So I need a big pry bar. Fudge and fudge. All right, camera just fell down. So <laughs> let's go for this again. I find it a lot easier if you get the heater core off of these two studs when you start. Because it tends to hang up on those guys. So that guy first. Ah, wear eye protection. I almost got hit in the eye. Happens almost every time. <laughs> okay, after a hard one battle, hard fought battle, heater core is out. Don't forget that little guy when you go to take your heater core out. One, two, three, yank like crazy and you'll be good. Anyway, it's out, that's great. This is where we need to feed our harness in from the engine compartment. So uh, we'll pull this guy back and hopefully with a little more success and then get that harness out. To get this whole section out, you can just grab those two little bolts there and the wiring harness will come on out. I bend this guy over to make room for it to just slide right out there. The 
C unit. You can go ahead and clip these wires, go into it. Don't need them. Don't need them. Don't need them. And this guy, it's free top and bottom. You can kind of waggle it, wiggle it back, get it out of the way so that underneath we can string through the harness that we need for this main relay. So we're going to grab this bolt and then cut all this stuff, go into the body, which we don't need, and then string that through. We're almost scot free. So just to give a visual reference on this, main relay was right there. That's all we need from over here. So all this other stuff is cut out of the way and we just have this branch um, that we cut off. And we will now string this uh, from behind the AC unit, pull the string tube out so I can get it back there. Um, and if I remember right, that's about all we need to do. And we're just gonna pull it right through. We got our main relay right there. Um, and we've got basically everything we need to pull that guy through. So <laughs> we're getting so close. We've got this stuff, this stuff, this guy right here, ECU connection, and then we're gonna push those through and we are gonna be looking good. All right, so what I do on this side is for these grommets, take a tool like this, I don't know if I can get one-handed, but just kind of get it started going in there without you know poking into the wires or anything. Get it started, push that grommet through all the way around. Same on this. So I've got this ready to push through uh, with that grommet and I'm gonna cut these and then we're gonna have our harness, which is pretty exciting. Okay, it's time to um, push our harness through and we're going to be all done. All done. All done. All done. All done. All done. Oh, all done. Oh, Jesus, Travis. All right, so I pulled that through a little bit. You generally want to push the harness through as opposed to pull it, but I needed to make sure it was clear. So it's clear. I'm going to go around to the front and you'll see it get pulled through there or pushed through there. Boom, right there. That's all we need. Whew. Right, look at us. So this is what the pull harness should look like. Uh, there's still a few couple bits on here. So we need our diagnostic connectors. We do not need this one. Um, but just to go through here real quick, finished product, obviously we need the ECM. We need its connectors. So they stay there. If we follow it around, um, this goes to the engine. We've got our two main plugs and we've got our uh, O2 sensor plugs right there. So need those guys. If we keep following it around over here, we've got our diagnostic ports. And then if we keep following it all the way to here, we've got our fuel pump relay. So need that. Now going on this way, um, we do not need this guy. We don't need that connector. So I'll cut those off for that relay. We do need the OBD2 port. So we'll have that. And then jumping up here, our main relay, which brings us back to the main branch. Um, don't need that little guy, so I'll cut that off. But next up for this harness is to strip it all down, strip all the electrical tape uh, and everything off of it and start to get it ready, cleaned up uh, for putting in the bus brain, uh, which is what I call the area where all the electrical stuff goes in the buses. So there we go. And one final note while I'm putting this away, the next step, which you'll see in the next video, is stripping all of the electrical tape and um, all the stuff off the outside, the sheathing off the outside to get to all these bare wires. So we're gonna pull out so many of these wires that are just orphaned wires, we don't need them. And we'll be left with our actual harness that will be for the Subaru conversion into your bay window bus. All right, so I'm gonna wrap this section up. So that is what it takes to pull the harness from under the dash um, and from where it connects to the engine. Uh, I hope that was a good look into the process uh, for those of you who I'm doing conversions for. Um, that one in particular, I think for the Reggie builds coming up. Um, and then if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, uh, feel free to email me, uh, travis at modernbay.co. Uh, leave them in the comments. I'll try to get back to you. Um, and yeah, hope it was helpful. Thanks.